Welcome gang, this is the plumbing video. I'm gonna outline the setup for the sure flow pump and accumulator today. And we'll run, a run along the domestic setup for the kitchen tap and also the wastes. And then we'll finish off with the condensate for the fridge and I'll show you how I've installed that as well. So let's get straight into it. Basically the tanks have nozzles on which are fitted with this compression hosing. The stuff that I'm going to use in the van is this 12mm GSP push fit hose so I needed to convert this to the push fit and then obviously going to bring it up through the floor here and this is where the sewer floor 30 psi sewer floor pump and the accumulator is going to be sat and I'll show you how I'll link that up in a minute but first I'm going to show you how I need to convert this to this so basically you get these sewer floor compression fittings that will fit into the end of this and then you've got these male ends to 12 mil push fit which will screw into here with some PTFE tape and then I can run a stem Y connector which I've got here to have the constant feed and also branch off for a feed to fill the tank so I'm gonna get this linked up underneath the van and I'll run you through it again after I've done that quick run through of the things that I've got here so this is going to be converted to the push fit by this sugar floor connection and a male BSP fitting to 12 mil so from the 12 millimeter compression we're going to go to a stem T one of these feeds is going to go from the direct link for if we are on water hookup this is going to be for the tank fill up which is then going to go to the tank and then the tank is going to go up and meet the pump so that's just a quick run through got some elbows and other different fittings here and i'll show you how i'm going to put them together further on in the video So just a quick one on how the pump and accumulator are put together. Just use the gas and water regulated paste on the inside of the female fittings like I have done with most of the other plumbing and also the gas. And you just want to make sure the direction of flow is correct. And then I'll show you later on in the video what order these components are actually set up in. Right guys, as you can see by where I placed the 12 volt wire for the pump and the accumulator tank, I was going to mount it on the floor here, but this would have to be the position of the pump. So basically the tank is underneath somewhere around this area and it would mean that I would have to bring the water pipe up here and then into this quarter turn valve here so basically going to lose all of this portion of space floor space here so 
just been toying with a few ideas and I think I'm going to change it to be mounted up here on this cover for the wheel arch and then I've just pre-drilled a small hole measured and pre-drilled a small hole so the water is going to come straight up through this hole and then just elbowed into this quarter turn valve sorry up through this hole and then just elbowed into this quarter turn valve and next to it there will just be a constant feed which I've showed you from the underneath which will come up and then that will follow along behind here just by itself into this T here or T or Y, y fitting whatever you like and then basically so you've got your quarter turn filter 30 psi pump accumulator quarter turn valve this is a check valve a one-way valve to stop the flow from the direct feed coming back into the accumulator so that's a check valve and then a y valve and that will just go out to the cold feed on the shower and then the boiler so when we plugged into mains hookup we've got a constant water feed and we're not draining the water from the tank so that's how i'm going to go about it I'm going to widen this hole now and then I'm going to use a little bit of corrugated plastic to stop the pipe from chafing on any metalwork down there and bring this up and get it all connected up. Right guys, that is the 30 psi fuel flow pump and accumulated tank in place. Inline filter in front and a couple of quarter turns just to isolate these if anything does go wrong. 12 volt connection and this is the constant feed and I'll show you how that works under the van now. Basically got the hose which is coming from my house which is your constant feed. You can get plug ups on sites and stuff like that. You got your king valve here. Let's turn the white light down a bit there. So got the king valve here so you will turn this and that's giving you pressure. So this comes into a Y connection here. So if you're wanting to fill the tank, you'll just turn this quarter turn here and that'll start filling the tank. Once that's full, it'll just start overflowing from the top. And then the second connection is your constant feed, which goes straight up into the van. And I'll show you from the inside now. This is the feed from the tank this is the constant feed so the constant feed just goes straight through here to the Y connection and then that goes straight off to all your appliances and got the tank hooked up here through the electric so if I wanted the pump to start working for example just say this is turn the shower or the tap on turn this the pump will kick in and then if you look at the end of this hose here the water coming out there so yeah everything working as it should be just use that as an isolation for the time being until I get everything hooked up and happy with that yeah well, peeps this is our waste tank the water tank also has the same element you can see the little bayonets just sticking out the side there so basically this heating element in our water and waste tanks this will stop our tanks from freezing as we are going to be spending some time in the alps so basically a 12 volt wire that's run from the switchboard it's completely covered in this plastic sheathing and as you can see i've just slipped a, a pipe clip and that brass coupling what i'm showing you there now over the top so the end of the 12 volt wire has just got some bayonet fittings on and then basically once these are connected I'll just give them a little spray with some hairspray to 
seal the connections a bit and give them a bit of extra protection and then once the once the bayonet fittings are connected just use a bit of sicker flex to secure the brass coupling to the outside of the actual element itself and then once all that are cured and everything just use the pipe clip with the sheathing to connect that all together and then that just ensures that the whole connection is waterproofed and it's going to protect it from any rust or any debris that might come up from the, the road and damage that. So these water and waste tanks from CAC tanks are meant to be good for between minus three and minus seven degrees but as you probably figured out in the Alps it can get down to well below that so we've had to take the extra step to get these heating elements in so hopefully that will sort out the problem with the, the waste and water. That's it for that. So to fit the sink waste, we put the sink in place to start with, marked centers and just use a small pilot drill to drill the center hole. Once we did that, remove the sink, measured the size of the waste, then used a, a hole saw that was a couple of millimeters bigger than the, the waste and used that to widen the hole. Then just repeated the process with the, the waste and marked centers at the, the back of the actual stand and then opened that up as well. So we're just going to fit the Belfast sink. I have drilled out holes that are the right size for the waste. So that's obviously the main waste and this is for the overflow. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put silicon, circle beads of silicon on this bit of ply here. Then I'm going to squish the basin down onto that so it's set in place and then once that's done I'm going to push the overflow pipe up through this hole because it, it's best if you twist this to get it to go up this plastic bit at the back you just twist it keep twisting it until it seats right up the top of this overflow connection and then once that is done I'll straighten the waist up so it's facing that way bend it around the bottom of the unit like so and then this piece of rubber will go inside of the waste there you get a little piece of foam that goes in there but I'm not even going to use that I'm just going to put a thick bead of white silicon on the underside of this drainer strainer whatever you want to call it and then push that into place inside of the middle of the sink and then put the screw in to tighten it all up and then once the silicon's cured then we can look at getting our adapter to get this from the inch and a half to the 25 millimeter convoluted pipe that we've got so let's do that now So as you've just seen, 
put a quite a thick bead of silicon on usually these grates are the same size as the open in the sink but for whatever reason this sink this thing's handmade so this is obviously just a standard fitting and this hasn't been made the standard fitting size so i'm gonna have to put some more silicon out towards the edges here so it gets a grip on the actual ceramic and then we'll just make sure it's all joined up so it doesn't matter how much silicon is going to be in there you're never going to see that once it's put down so put plenty on there and then we'll get it connected up So as you can see, just give it a quick wipe down with a wet hand wipe and now I'm just going to make the bottom up with a screwdriver, make sure that the rubber gasket is sealed and in the centre, don't want any gaps there. So oh, just plumbing in the sink waste, the waste that I put and siliconed into the actual sink is a standard waste size which is one and a quarter inches. So basically what I've got here is a spigot, washing machine spigot, this is one and a half. So that's the only one I can find was one and a half not a one and a quarter so the one and a half goes into the one and a half size this is a McAlpine reducer so this goes from one one and a half to one quarter so I'm going to use it reversed so the one and a quarter will go on the standard sink waste and then obviously that connects to the spigot that just screws in it's already got the seals in there and then your 25 millimeter sink waste will go into that and I'll just use a jubilee clip to clamp that down under the spigot if anybody is plumbing their waste in I got advice off the fine gentleman at CAC tanks who built and installed the waste and water tanks underneath our van and he said a lot of people will put the standard house inch and a quarter waste in and basically because there's air gap in the water flow down the inch and a half pipe it doesn't flow away as quick with this 25 millimeter convoluted pipe basically the water is in the entire pipe so it creates a suction and it sucks the water right down and if you have got underslung tanks it'll make sure that the water gets into the tank as, as best it can so you want to order this it's 25 millimeter convoluted pipe get the stuff that has not got ridges and is smooth on the inside and that'll obviously stop any food debris or dirt or muck or anything getting caught in there and coming back up the pipe as a smell so basically got this and I've got an inline waste So this is the inline waste, this is also from CAC tanks but I ordered this online so <clears throat> obviously you know what a waste, or you should know what a waste is, basically it's just a water void so the water that's in here will be stored and that's just an S bend so the water that sits in here stops any smells from coming back up the pipe, <clears throat> up the pipe and that basically just clamps straight under there with the Jubilee clip as well so I'm going to go from the kitchen sink to the spigot to the waste inline inline trap back to the waste and then that's going straight through the floor I'm gonna have a wire connection from the shower also and then we're just gonna have one feed coming across the van into the waste and water tanks so while I'm on the subject the tanks from CAC tanks uh, I would highly recommend a I told them they're about us going to the Alps and we have paid the extra money to get heating elements installed in the actual tanks so when the temperature drops below a certain temperature these heating elements will kick in and stop the water from freezing in our tanks so hopefully that will sort us out when we're in the Alps and 
I'll show you how that's all been hooked up but for now I'm going to get this waste installed and I'll show you it after it's all set up. So I'm just about going to the van and drill some holes for the waste. Unfortunately some of the structural members I need to go through. Basically when the shower comes through the bottom I need to keep the waste as high as possible so there's a natural fall on the pipe over to the tank so need to keep it as close to the underside of the chassis as possible and some of the members you can't actually get them from this side you've got the box member you've got the void in the middle you can get it from this side but this this side is too close to the side of the van so you wouldn't physically be able to get your drill in there so I'm gonna have to go through this side of the box section with a hole saw and then straight through the other side unfortunately with a uh, standard hole saw size it's only about that big so you can only get through a small section of metal so I'm getting this extension bar and that just works with a slotted screwdriver you just stick your hole saw in the end of that and then I can go straight through the box section so I'm gonna get them drilled and the waste pipe pulled in and then I'll give you a fine folks a look at that afterwards. So that is all the members drilled under the van. Uh, I would advise to use gloves and probably don't do it in a vest top as my shoulders are a bit rubbed a bit and I keep getting little shards of metal in my hand but this is what it is. And this is also meant to be a half decent vest, so Jen will probably be complaining that I'm ruining some more clothes, but... <laughs> I'm gonna drill this... ...hole underneath the sink, for the sink waste to go through, and then... ...we will route that to the shower connection, into the Y connector, and then the Y connector over to the waste tank. Originally, I was gonna have separate waste running over, but... I think it's going to make more sense to put them in a Y connection and then the extra inlets that I have for the waste tank I'll just silicon them up or possibly leave them open. So let's get this done now and then we'll have weights and it's uh, weights, waste. So I'm just trying to bridge from the sink waste to the 25 millimeter convoluted pipe which is going to be going on this spigot here and it's turned out to be a bit more complicated than I thought so basically how I'm going about it I bought this 32 mil or inch and a half waste 90 degree coupling so turns out that the waste on this sink's actually inch and a half so I've had to buy an inch and a half to inch and a quarter adapter so it'll be female to male and then this female will fit onto the the male end of the coupling and then basically just using a bit of 32 millimeter waste and then I've got the 32 millimeter to 40 millimeter or inch and a quarter to inch and a half reducer and then the spigot is going to be going in the end of there so to cut this bit of pipe basically i've just taken the end off where it's going to be sat plot that in put the cover on and then marked it with a sharpie i've then taken it off measured the distance from the end of where i put the mark added five millimeters so there's five millimeters gap in between for the join and then I know that this pipe that's inside both of the fittings is seated uh, full slip and also the fittings are going to be quite close together so this is basically just bridging the gap between the female at this end and the female at this end for the mechanical fittings so yeah basically when you order the parts you should get them and these blue rings or sometimes they can be different colors will be sat inside so you can see that 
rubber there has got a little bit of a chamfer on it so that wants to be going down into the actual mechanical fitting and then once that's in there like that this plastic ring goes on or you can put it inside of the lid like so and then put that on basically all that does is when you screw this down it makes sure that there's a uniform press on the rubber so there's make sure there's no gaps appear in the rubber because if you you just have this pressing straight down on the rubber it could nip more one side where the pressure starts to come onto the rubber and then you're going to get a leak somewhere so make sure that you put the hard plastic bit in there and if you want to be extra extra sure you can actually put ptf tape around this thread here and then you're good to go these mechanical fittings are quite good i would never you normally use ptf tape i'll normally do a leak test and then if there is a, a slight weep on the the pipes then i'll put some pdf tape on but yeah so that's going to be like that and then this spigot goes inside of the reduced or the the reverse reducer in this case because i could only find a spigot with a inch and a half connection on it so this spigot will house the 25 millimeter convoluted pipe and then that will come from the waist down the back here and then you can see the hole there that will drop through the middle of the van and then i've just got this y connector offline which the sink waste will come into this side and the shower waste will come into this side and then it'll just be one feed over the middle of the van to the waste so I'm going to get all this fitted and then I will run the camera across the underside of the van and show you how it's all connected and that's pretty much it for the waste guys. So just for this part where you connect the spigot, you don't actually need that plastic ring as the two rubber bits, the one that's attached to the half inch spigot connector and the rubber bit that sits inside the actual mechanical coupling, them are what press together and create a seal but as this isn't a usual joint I've actually used PTFE tape on this fitting and just like every other connection make sure that you wrap your, your tape on in the direction that you are actually going to be tightening the thread on and this will stop the tape from unraveling and creating any uneven pressure within the joint which inevitably is going to lead to a leak as well. So this sink waste, like I said, is an inch and a half. So I'm just getting an inch and a half to inch and a quarter coupling, which will just go straight under this. The female will just screw straight under that. And then that'll give me a male thread, the same as what this is, but it'll be inch and a quarter. And then that will, the waste will screw onto there. And then it'll be angled over towards the back. Bit of the, uh, the angled over towards the back here 
and then the 20 mil will come off the spigot and then the waste pipe will go down through the floor there. the LPG tank it's then routed through this member here which the LPG tank bracket are actually attached to and basically just cut 32 millimeter holes through these members and then I put these rubber washers on then route through this member here and comes through the back it is then connected via a Y connector so this pipe here is the sink and that there is the shower shower hasn't got a trap on at the moment as we are going to the Alps and obviously a trap has residual water in it which is just going to freeze straight away so I haven't put a tap on the shower at the moment because that's going to be outside but uh, once we are finished in the Alps and done there I'll be putting a trap on there to stop any smells hopefully we won't have any problem with smells anyway but basically them are wired into a single connector and they run across the center of the van here into a single connection they run along the center of the van here and I've just put some hose clips to keep them out of way these these wires that are running along the length of the van here one there goes through the back and then basically runs through there through this section here which is being drilled as well and then through the box section and into one of the outlets there and then the other two are just going to be spares because i am actually only actually running one waste pipe over here so I might just leave them open to be honest as a bit of an overflow as we'll be, we'll be um, emptying our waste quite regularly anyway so yeah that's the waste and pretty much it for the plumbing right, now. Quick one on the fridge install this is the CRX model I've read the instructions for this condensate drip or whatever you would like to call it condensate drain off and it says in the instructions that Installing this is optional. I've decided I'm going to put it in as I don't want pools of water in the bottom of the fridge I haven't actually used the fridge yet, so I might have got away with it, but Thought there's no harm in putting it in so basically you get this little 90 degree Elbow and you just fit that to the hole and obviously the hole goes into the lowest point of the Bottom of the fridge which is sloped in so the water actually drains into this hole so I'm going to need to route this through the actual floor but on our van, the waste tank is actually 
directly under here where the fridge is so basically what I'm gonna have to do is pin a line on the edge of this step where there's a little gap for me to get a drill bit up over and I have got the this extension piece with a 10 millimeter drill bit in there and I will drill up over and then I can just feed this down through the hole and then I'll cut the excess off underneath the van and that's pretty much it so I've drilled the hole up and this is it here and then the outside diameter of this pipe is 13 millimeters so I've used a 13 mil drill bit and widened the hole now I'm just going to feed this through until it comes through the bottom of the van and just pull this fridge back a little bit and pull pull that out the bottom of the van fridge back out the bottom of the van and until it's in place and then what I'm going to do I don't think I'm going to cut any of the slack off underneath I'm just going to fix that somewhere possibly cut a small amount off but basically I need this long enough for if I ever need to get the fridge out of this space so connect the 12 volt up and then we'll get the fridge back in place and that should be the last time it comes out of there until we use oh, just under the van here and the condensate pipe comes down between this gap here between the step and the waste tank and then I've just uh, put a zip tie on and then condensate will just drip out of there hopefully it's got a hole on it and happy with that so That's that was the plumbing video I'm gonna leave the plumbing for the shower uh, for the shower install video and you can just piece that together if you are installing a shower into your van so the waste video for the shower will also be on there I haven't installed the waste for under the sink obviously I showed you how I put this part together and I will explain that a bit better now so basically I had this reducer to start with as the spigot that I'll get was only an uh, inch and a half fitting so got the reducer thinking that a standard sink, sink waste is actually an inch and a quarter but I couldn't find a reducer with basically you've got two types of females you've got the females that your UPVC solvent pipe will push into and the mechanical fitting will actually tighten onto and basically just to get these fittings here these are usually part of a trap so to get these fittings here they are quite a specialized part so obviously I had to buy this and attach these together and with this being a sink this is actually a standard inch and a quarter but for whatever reason the sink that we got it was an inch and a half waist fitting so what I've had to do is buy this reducer which is basically an inch and a half female to inch and a half male sorry inch yeah inch and a half female to inch and a half male so that'll screw on to the bottom of the sink and then that'll screw into there and then we'll take it from there you might be looking at this waste here and seeing that there's actually a little bit of a rise here to get to the spigot and this will be sat flat so I'm hoping there's no debris is going to get caught in this area here of, of the waste um, but I'm going to fit it as is I think that the flow of the water will take anything down the spigot itself but if needs be and we do start to get smells what I'll have to do is take this joint apart and just put a little solvent 45 kick so the, there'll be a bit of solvent 45 kick so this is on more of a downward uh, angle and then obviously the water will run away a bit better and that should resolve that problem but I, I don't think there's going to be any problems anyway so I'm going to get that installed now and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm finished right that's the waste fitted and it's back to the drawing board with these inline traps as they're actually the bit that you clamp onto is actually too big turns out these are 25 millimeters and the outside diameter is 25 millimeters 
the outside diameter of these convoluted pipe is 25 millimeters, inside diameter is 20 millimeters, so it's just not gonna go over. So these are pretty much redundant, unfortunately, but I've just connected it up for the time being. Uh, so we've got a waste and we can give our waste tank a try out, but I think ultimately I'm gonna end up changing the waste setup under the sink here, but I'll give you a look at it and let's see how it's looking. So I've got the reducer there, I've just put PTFE tape on the original waste thread, PTFE tape on the male end and then I've tightened up with the pipe grips as you can see on the little lugs here and then the waste pipe's just attached to the spigot with a jubilee clip and goes down through the floor there and I'll be filling in the hole there with a bit of silicon uh, and that's it. Right, so we've got the door here for the garage. Basically, that just opens like so. In here, as I've already shown you, is the pump set up. Comes, the water comes through the back of the wall. Obviously, there's a wire connection there for the constant feed and also the feed coming off the tank. And then the feed comes through, hits a T, and then it tees off for the cold feed of the shower and then the feed that's coming down over here it goes underneath the shower tray from the shower tray it, it runs along the back of the shower tray and then at the back of the shower tray there's another tee which tees off for the toilet feed here which will be outlined in the shower and toilet build and then we have the cold feed comes in underneath and then there's another T piece here which runs up for the cold feed for the sink and then the cold feed just carries on got the drain off valve for the boiler here and then the cold feed goes into the boiler obviously the boiler heats up the water and then the hot will come out and then it's the same with the the hot it's just teed off behind these heating ducts here up to the hot tap on the kitchen sink and then that's just a closed circuit and the hot water feed goes in behind the shower tray and then up to the shower for the hot feed and then we have the condensate that's been plumbed in for the fridge also and that's pretty much it for the plumber. Just a quick one people. I forgot to mention it when I was taking the videos in the van. I'm just doing the edit now for the video, but basically for the conversion from the blue compression fitting pipe and the push fit pipe, the push fit pipe that I was using actually fit inside of the compression fitting pipe. And I just, you might be able to see it briefly on the bit under the van where I show you how to fill the tank up. The actual feed that's coming up to the pump I've just put the push fit inside of the compression hose and, and I put about 10 inches of pipe in there and just use three jubilee clips and I put a leak test on it and it's actually fine so if you're struggling to find the sugar flow fittings like I showed you early in the video then that is always an option just to bear in mind so that concludes the plumbing as a whole uh, we'll be outlining the shower plumbing in the shower video as I already said so keep an eye out for that and any other videos give us a like and a subscribe follow our social media show some support show some love and enjoy the process I'll see you guys next time take care of yourselves